cloud computing and its impact on IT. Over time, technology has replaced more and more jobs. Today, we begin to see technology replace even technological jobs. We hear the term cloud brought up more and more frequently, but what exactly is it and how does it work? Well, the cloud typically consists of services running on large groups of servers across the cloud. Cloud companies make their profit from these services, so they acquire mass quantities of hardware to provide servers, and then they run their services with high bandwidth networks and elastic storage. So we have somewhat defined the typical cloud company's purpose, but how do they do it all? Let's start with applications. The cloud does not work with the style of traditional monolithic applications. A monolithic application would generally contain all of the application components within a single application. Because the cloud companies have to cater to many different customers, it makes more sense to modularize the applications and dice them up into distinct services. So they take each of these services and automatically deploy them in the cloud as separate components, which can then be auto-scaled and auto-recovered in the face of failure. They then label them as microservices. Customers can create an application using these microservices, and they pay the cloud company for using them. So our cloud companies offer these services to a wide variety of customers, but these services need servers to run on. So how does a typical cloud company go out and buy these servers? Well, cloud companies now go directly to the ODM, or Original Design Manufacturer. In the traditional business model, ODMs would distribute their hardware to OEMs like Dell and HP. The OEMs would then rebrand the hardware with their name and redistribute the hardware to customers. The idea was that they would maintain and provide reliable service to the customers if they needed it. The profit of these big cloud companies is partly driven by these servers, and they have to buy hundreds of thousands of them. Because they purchase large quantities, they have buying power, which gives them the economies of scale. This means that they can buy mass quantities at a relatively cheaper price, directly from the ODMs. So why are ODMs important? If they are cheaper, they might be more unreliable. Well, by Moore's law, the hardware gets faster and cheaper over time. As a result, if a piece of hardware dies, it's actually more cost efficient to just replace them with new hardware altogether, rather than dealing with the middleman OEMs to maintain and service the hardware. We have two primary types of companies. Company A represents the companies that decide that they want to move most of the compute to the cloud. Company B represents the companies that decide they want to keep most of the compute in the company. Well, if Company B decides to do it all on their own, how will they compete against the cost-efficient power of the cloud? Will the cloud simply overpower and destroy them? This doesn't appear to be the case. So we see that there are a good number of companies who decide that they do not want to move their compute to the cloud. In order to afford this, they need to get cheap hardware from ODMs. But the ODMs only sell cheap hardware when they are bought in mass. These companies get together and communicate. They create an alliance, such as the Open Compute Project, and then they buy the hardware together so that they have the same buying power in economies of scale as large cloud companies when they go out to purchase the equipment. So now that they have the equipment, they need the nifty microservices that the cloud has. Open source organizations like OpenStack are making this a possibility. They provide free and open source services that companies contribute to so that they can share and utilize the services. With automation software, microservices, and cheap ODM hardware, these companies like Company B, who didn't move their compute to the cloud, are now relevant as ever, and they're able to keep pace with the big, bad, powerful cloud companies. So we've talked about how the cloud is going to affect companies. But what does this all mean for actual IT employees? Well, unfortunately, a lot of these IT guys who are trained in traditional IT methods are in trouble. What exactly do I mean by IT employees? IT people are the ones that companies would hire to do operational management of servers, storage, compute, and network. As the impact of cloud and automation becomes heavier, companies are beginning to get rid of traditional IT employees. Instead, companies like Company A hire new employees that do co-development inside the cloud. Companies like Company B hire new employees that do co-development for their private on-premise cloud. The programs first. This makes it fun. Let's do something a little more fun. How about microservice training? Microservices? I'm going to learn microservices.